a quorum. And um, yeah, in terms of the missing pieces of information, basically everything that was missing on both projects came in today, this afternoon. So it's up to you all whether or not you wanna take any of it, look at any of it tonight or continue both. Um, you can hear from the applicants and and make your call, but I haven't even reviewed all of it. So um, okay, so we're not going to end anything tonight. Well, you yeah, could, yeah it, it just depends on how you feel. Well, I think Julia, if you haven't looked at it, we need to continue because my I mean, understanding I gave it a, with Five Harbor Street, the stuff that Tom submitted, I did give a quick look, and what he submitted does look like it 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 takes care of the um, comments that you had about the appraisals. Um, it's just that he submitted it this afternoon. So I do. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. So maybe we just need to continue and, uh, and move on. And um, then Tom doesn't have to worry about uh, coming. I mean, I think they'd like to, I think he would prefer it if we switched the order so that he could at least that you know address the the project um and then if you want to continue fine but i told him that that we only had two items on the agenda and that we would switch the order if he wasn't here so that he could present yeah no we can we can certainly do that i'm not gonna yeah say no to that but. yeah but then it doesn't have to go but if, if we continue the first one <clears throat> you know that's only going to take a couple minutes exactly yeah, it's a good yeah, point. So we're we're really not gonna we're not gonna save him any time. It's only gonna be a minute or two. Because we we don't we really can't do the second one anyways. We need time to look at it, look at the presentation or you know the information. So yeah. um yeah. Right. So what they submitted on the second one, the 1654th Street, David, you were asking about this. They they submitted a revised narrative to go to make those corrections and everything. But then they only gave us the cover page. Um, was it you who pointed that out, David or Bill? I wanted you. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually they I got in touch with him and they did like upload the complete thing, but that was at like four o'clock. So yeah. Um, uh yeah. Um I, I'm not uh, super comfortable with doing any of these tonight or either of these tonight. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Well, I have a hard enough time understanding them when I have time to look at it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm feeling the same way. I I uh, by this afternoon, I just assume they both be continued. And and honestly, our our rule is you got to get the stuff in a week in advance, not yeah, a couple you hours do. in advance. And so, um. Yeah. So we can, we'll do that. We'll, we can, I don't even know, should we even open the hearing? Because we, we can't do anything with it. You know, the, um, we don't have well, all the information. I mean, you could say it's, it's, if it's a complete application, you kind of have to open the hearing because there's a time limit, you know, there's okay. a time window. Um, well, no, that that's fine. Yeah. Then you don't have to um, close the hearing. All right, guys, get ready to vote several times rapidly today. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. We have you know what? I rushed home in time to get to this meeting. Yeah, because where were you in northern New Hampshire somewhere? Yeah, I was hiking. Yeah. Oh, good. It was such a beautiful day. I'm glad you got, yep. got out there. Um, it was just a gorgeous day. Um, okay, so let's see. We also, I learned, have a new conservation commission member. Um, we do. Yeah, who I just heard about this today from Gretchen. She emailed me to tell me that she saw her name on the website, but I had not heard about her yet. Um, Gretchen who? Our Gretchen? Yeah, Gretchen. Gretchen, Kelly. speak up, please. Yes, it was me. It was me. <laughs> You're going to be on the I commission? It. No, it's not me. It was me who reported it. Oh. Yes. I'm not the Gretchen, new member. Gretchen told, told me that we had a new member. 
the guy didn't know because nobody told me that we had a new member. Oh. Um, but so thank you for doing that, Gretchen, because um, I just wanted to make, now I can go to the mayor's office and ask them for information um, about who she is and how to get in touch with her. So I uh, appreciate that. Very good. Now I'll have to look at the uh, city council minutes. Yeah. Well, it is 6.45 and we have a quorum, so I'm going to bring this meeting to order. And uh, this is the April 4th, uh, April 4th, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, this is the uh, April 16th meeting of the New Report Conservation Commission taking place on the Zoom platform and this meeting is being recorded. The first item on the uh, agenda, the April 2nd, where are we? April 4th. Yes. Was it April 4th? Um, it, was, it was April 4th. Sorry. Oh, wait. No, it's yes. the 2nd. <laughs> no, was that the 2nd? Okay, this is the 16th. Yeah, okay. I apologize. So this, uh, the date on this agenda is incorrect. It should say 16th. If that is correct about that it's the April 2nd meeting, I don't know why. Okay. Now let's get that straight. This is the approval meeting minutes of April 2nd, 2024. Yes. yes. Uh, anybody have any uh, comments or? Let me let me pull them up. Sorry. Might as well. Nothing. I don't have any anything. Okay. okay. Uh, in that case, I'll take a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Uh, Mayor Bill Mullen. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Stephen Moore. Yes. And uh, I'll vote yes. Uh, okay. Car so, Carol's here too. Good. Carol's here? Yes. Oh, we didn't see Carol. Okay. I gotta scroll down. Hi, Carol. Oh, dang. Sorry, Carol. I don't like the way this is set up. I have to, I didn't see that you were even in there. Carol, what is your vote on the uh, meeting minutes? If she only we could hear you. Sorry, I've been on Zoom like all, all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm abstaining because I wasn't at the meeting. Uh, okay. So sorry, I'm taking time for that, but there you go. We're all set. All right, so uh, Julie, we have any Plum Island updates? Um, we had a really good MRBA meeting a week, uh, I guess it was a little over a week ago, um, but no real updates. Well, actually the update, I guess I should say that there is a good update. The Army Corps of Engineers um, is getting closer to completing their, they're calling the major maintenance report on the jetty, which was, which was actually them looking at whether or not the jetty was causing this gyre effect in the erosion on reservation terrace and whether or not ch changes to the jetty would um, basically solve the problem and, and reduce the erosion. And they came up with the answer that yes, it, it is the jetty. And yes, a weir in the jetty would actually um, alleviate the erosion along reservation terrace. So right now, which is excellent news. We, we sort of all knew that all along. Um, but it's excellent that they've reached that conclusion as well. And now they can um, move forward with design and um, getting funding for a modification to the jetty to create the weir. Um, they still have more modeling to do to know where to put the weir on the jetty and you know how big to make it and all that. Um, but it's excellent news. So yeah, I don't know, and you know, timing is always an issue with Army Corps in terms of how long it takes them to do a design and then get funding and then do construction. But um, at least we're moving in the right direction. So I think the folks on Reservation Terrace were very happy to hear that. Can yeah. I ask you though, do, do they also look at whether once they, I don't even know what it means to put a weir in there. So, but will that then affect erosion elsewhere on the island yeah. or they think it'll so, solve the problem? Well, it's a great question. They do think it will solve the problem on Reservation Terrace, but you're absolutely right. Um, well, it could cause a problem on the um, on the south in front side of the, of the jetty. right in yeah. front of Dr. Hamani's house. Exactly, exactly where we had issues long ago, which you can remember 
and then they and they sort of rebuilt the jetty and changed everything. So the concern is that by putting a weir in the jetty, you would end up with that old problem coming back again. So that's why they're looking really closely at how large the weir should be, um, what the elevations should be, where exactly along the jetty should that weir be placed, so that ex exactly so that they don't cause that kind of a problem. Um, so they're going to be looking at a bunch of different alternatives. Hopefully, you know, we end up with this for everybody. So um, did you see Bill Sargent's article or letter or whatever that was in the paper last week? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So he he claims that the jetty has sunk four feet. Whether it has or not, I don't hey, know. Hey, it, it is a large pile of rocks sitting on sand, so maybe it did. <laughs> I don't think Bill... Like though, I mean, he may be right. I don't know. Um, There's probably areas that have fallen that uh, settled that much because I mean, yeah. it, it, you you can see a depression in some areas. Mm -hmm. But he also well, mentioned yeah. something about um, he was out there taking measurements and drone flights and so on and so forth, and he mentioned the city contract. I know that was my my Did problem you... with it was that he mentioned that he was under contract with the city, which he wasn't. So I, I, I mean, I... Well, I'll have to I, go I back and read it. that. I, I didn't read it. And of course, Bill Sargent was pretty much the first person I ever heard talking about putting a weir in a jetty. He, right. he, he was calling for that a long time ago. I think as soon as the jetty was repaired, he was calling for that. But pretty much, as as soon as this erosion started, that's pretty yeah. much what he was saying. So he gets uh, he gets a prize for that at least, whether or not he has a contract with the city. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. Um, anything else regarding that? So the bottom Didn't line they, is, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Didn't didn't they uh, from the uh, slideshow the uh, PowerPoint? Uh, didn't they also make some comments about how the Newburyport uh, sand is holding up? Yes, that was very interesting. So the dredged sand that they placed along Reservation Terrace, the two hundred and something thirty two hundred thirty ish cubic yards of sand. Um, you know, has shifted a lot, has moved a lot. And you might go out there and say, wow, it looks really different. We must have lost all of the sand. But in reality, we don't know. We don't know what the volumes are. We don't have like a volume measurement and what's left. But we do, we can see based on Greg Moore, who's a professor at UNH, I think you might all remember him, that it's, the sand has just shifted northward. So it's, it started out sort of in a big pancake. And now it's, it's sort of shaped in more of a longer, rectangle reaching further north along the beach hmm. so it's basically spread out um and that is what they they said that they expected it to do and um, what they wanted it to do and it, we've also achieved a higher elevation there's like a crest to the like the front of it now um which is also what it was supposed to do it's creating more of a natural beach and dune profile so that's all also good news. We don't know whether or not, you know, how much volume was lost. That's a, a key question. But we do know that um, the shape of it has done something that was naturally expected. So I realize this is the refuge people rather than wh whoever met it, had, was at that meeting. But did, does anybody talk at all about whether they're going to repair the, the, the steps going down to the beach and by the refuge? Because almost all those... Uh, lots of clothes. The steps have all, the access has all been eroded. Oh, in the refuge or out at the Plum Island Point in the parking lot? Which, no, no, no. In, in the refuge. I don't know. That's a great question. Um, have they been pulled back? Has there been erosion, enough erosion down there that those steps have been pulled back? I didn't realize. On, on Plum Island, yeah. The first wow. parking lot, you can't even, you can't take the old boardwalk and go down the steps. They had to create another way to go in. And then the first couple of parking lots are closed because you can't get down to the beach. Oh, wow. Hmm. So That's, nobody talked um, about that. That we did not talk about that. That would be something to put on an agenda for the next time. And obviously that's that's in Newberry. So I'm sure that DCR mm -hmm. who owns that property, or oh, I guess it's a refuge, not even DCR, 
that they're I think it's a refuge, working yeah. with the Newberry Conservation Commission on those issues, um, that they did not address that at the MRB me MRBA meeting, but that would have been interesting to know about. Carol, are you sure that maybe those parking lots aren't closed because of the piping plovers? Could be, but if you walk along the beach, you can see that there's no longer an access from, okay. from the parking uh, lots down to the beach. It's, it's all been eroded away. I don't uh, know how far down I didn't go the all the way down. I think I went. Lot. Pardon me? I was told the first parking lot would be uh, kept open and then the others would be closed. Well, the first parking lot is open. They created another way to get from the parking lot down to the beach because the boardwalk and the steps. The boardwalk's still there, but you can't, the steps are gone. Hmm. So, was that from these previous storms? Yeah. I think it started, the wasn't there like a really big storm in January maybe or something? I think that's when, and yeah. I was just surprised. I just was down there about a week or so ago and it doesn't look like they've done anything. Maybe they just figured they'd wait till the weather changed, but I just didn't know if anybody was talking about it. I was surprised. Yeah. I will ask about it next time we see those guys. Thank you. And what about on um, reservation or the the point? Uh, uh, what what about the access there where the structure was taken uh, down on DCR property? Still closed. It's still closed. They had to pull it way back. Um, and I don't know if they're going to continue to have to pull it back even more or whether it may be stabilized at this point in terms of the erosion in that location, but. Um, yeah, they had to take down a major part of the boardwalk. Uh, Julia, I see the new member is an attendee. No. Oh. Barb. Barb Riley. Okay. Well, well uh, now that I've seen her name on our website, I will, let's see, we'll just move Barb Riley over to be a panelist if she wants to be. Um, Barbara Riley. Come on in, Barb. The water's fine. I, okay. Barbara, um, I just learned today that you were appointed to be our new conservation commissioner. So welcome. And I'm so glad that you're here. And, um, yeah, good. You can unmute yourself and be part of today's meeting. Oh, thank you. I, I wasn't sure. I was really just listening in. I thought maybe I'd wait to hear from you, but I thought, well, yeah. listen in and uh, I was waiting get to familiar hear from with your folks. Office about your appointment. And then um, Gretchen Joy. So I wasn't even really sure until this afternoon when Gretchen, who takes <laughs> our minutes, um, told me that your name was on the website already. Oh. So yeah. Um, was a little bit of a surprise, <laughs> but I'm really <laughs> glad. I was really glad to hear it, and um, and welcome. And you can just listen today if you want, and um, and then we can communicate about the next meeting. And I'll, because obviously you haven't seen the agenda and all this. Um, right, so. right, great. That that's great. Yeah. I just thought I'd listen in, and um, I, I'll touch base with you. You know, during the week or that's maybe great. next week or something. That's uh, thank Bar you. Yeah. Hi, Barb. Have you uh, been sworn in yet? <laughs> Uh, no, I have not. Okay. So you, you wouldn't be able to vote tonight anyway. So, um, oh. yeah, you gotta <laughs> get, get into the uh, clerk's office and get yourself sworn in and, and sign the big book. Okay. I, no one uh, had mentioned that, but it makes sense. <laughs> all right. Well, That'd we'll take good. care of all these details later, but thank you for showing up and just, yeah, feel free to sit back and listen and ask any questions if you want to, um, and we can go from there. Great, yeah. thank you. Okay. Um, all right then, on to the business at hand. Um, the first item is Lisa Nardone, 5 Harbor Street, request for determination. We do Continue. have Tom Hughes here. Okay. I'll move him to a panelist. Right, Tom. Hey, good evening. Um, <clears throat> Tom Hughes on behalf of Lisa Nardone at Five Harbor Street. 
Uh, you may recall at the last meeting, um, we had a little bit more housekeeping to do on the substantial improvement issue. Um, and it turned out I was only given one of a couple of reports and uh, and there was also a cover letter that was written that explained everything. <clears throat> so we, we had the perspective report, but we didn't have the existing report. And then the, there's a cover letter that pretty clearly explains the value change. Um, so we've submitted that into the record. Um, and the other thing we did is we had uh, the structural engineer's letter updated to reflect the uh, plan as submitted. So it doesn't have the extent expansion of the deck anymore uh, included in it. So that simplified that. Um, so with that said, I mean, the only other thing I do want to note is on our site plan, the planting area that's shown, we don't intend on doing that with the RDA. That was originally put on there because we were going to be proposing a shed. Um, and if we do come back in with the shed, we'll be putting the planting area, you know, back in service for that. But there's no impact outside the footprint of the home. Um, you know, it, it's a pretty straightforward plan at this point. Uh, and we have plenty of driveway to have, you know, the dumpster and, and contractor parking, et cetera. So we do not anticipate uh, uh, any impacts. Um, so at, at, I think at this point, Tom, because we only got the information late or this afternoon sometime, um, we're probably going to continue this just because we haven't had any time to look at any of the documentation. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that that's fair enough. What we submitted is pretty straightforward, and the valuation letter of explanation is, I mean, it's like literally got it all in one paragraph. Somebody's uh, got loud music playing. Yeah, with, sorry, uh, that's me. Um... <laughs> Listen to us, Carol, please. Um, so if we, if you go to, um, if we go a little bit further, I think there's a, a paragraph that yes. pretty clearly lays out. So right there, you know, as is market value is, uh, you know, 1.28, but you take out the land and you end up with 630,000. And then when it's all done, it's worth, you know, 1.45 and the, uh, the improvements 800. So it's less than a 50% increase in the value of the improvement, which is the building. Okay. So um, so that's pretty straightforward. Again, I don't wanna push the commission past this comfort. I acknowledge we just got that material into you. Uh, you know, today I got the last piece of it on Friday. I was out in the field all day Friday and obviously yesterday being a holiday, um, you know, so okay. if the commission's uncomfortable moving forward, but, but the information's all there and it's all supported by, you know, Greg Story's typical, highly detailed um, reports. And then the uh, the structural letter is essentially what you saw last time, saying that the foundation is, um, you know, fully capable of supporting the addition. Um, and it just removed reference to work that was related to a deck expansion. Okay. All right. So, um so Anything that's else? I mean, no, that's it. So, you know, the commission uh is comfortable voting. We we'd love that. If not, um, then I would certainly agree to a continuance. You know, I'll leave that up to the, the commission and your discretion. Okay. Well, I will I will leave it up to a uh, a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to continue to the next meeting. Second. And what is it what's the day of the next meeting? The May... next meeting is May 7th, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. May yeah. 7th. Okay. So continue to that to May 7th. Um, we got a second. Uh let's see. Uh Bill Mullen. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. And I will vote yes. All right. All Thank right. you. We'll see Thanks, you on May 7th. Take care. Okay. Nice. All right. Uh, may I get a motion to open the public hearings? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Uh, let's see, uh, Bill Mullen. 
Yes. David Vine? Yes. Steve Moore? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, so next item is uh, Sharon Sullivan, 1654th Street, Notice of Intent. Julie, you're talking, your lips are moving, but really? I don't hear you. Can't hear you. Oh. Oh, there I you can go. Hear I can now. hear you. Can you hear All me right. now? That's you funny. might be too far away from the mic or something. Maybe. Maybe that's it. So, okay. Now we have um, Chris Crump, who is the project architect, and um, it looks like Dan Wells from LAC Environmental, who is the consultant on the notice of intent. Um, why don't you all, this is the revised um, notice of intent, which we received this afternoon also. So why don't you all run through this with us and you can give a, your presentation on the project. I also have the um, project plans up here. Uh, good evening. Could I share my screen? This is Dan Wells. Yep, sure. Great. All right, thank you very much for meeting with us tonight. I'm Dan Wells with LEC Environmental and Chris Crump, the architect is here as well. I just wanted to start by giving a quick overview of where the project is located. You can see it's right over here. It's um, right above the town line with Newbury and it's uh, right on the edge of the Merrimack River. And this is just a zoom in that shows uh, aerial photo of what where the project where the lot is 1654th Street, and so the project is a small addition right in this just off extending off this corner of the house. It's 116 square feet in extent. This is a photograph of what it looks like there today, and the the addition would go just right in right in this area. Uh, just extending off the house. And these existing plants would be temporarily relocated and then replanted um, at the completion of the, the addition. There's also the project's going to be providing some mitigation. This is a, a part of the backyard, and this is going to be planted with American beach grass in a Square footage, uh, one to one, 116 square feet of American beach grass, which is going to, you know, enhance the coastal dune. So this is the project site plan, and so again, here's the area highlighted in red. This is where the addition would be, 116 square feet. Um, the addition, existing coastal resources. This is edge of coastal beach, which is highlighted in orange, which was delineated by LEC. Um, there's additionally the mean high water of the tidal Merrimack River was calculated and shown here. So the project you can see is located within 100 feet of that. Um, the entire property is within riverfront of the Merrimack River. Uh, there's the entire property is also Barrier Beach Coastal Dune associated with the, the Plum Island Barrier Beach system. And finally, the entire property is within the uh, FEMA 100-year flood zone, zone AE, which is at elevation 9. So you can see the, the existing house is about, there's some spot grades, 6.5, 7. So the entire property is within that flood zone. So therefore, the resource area would be land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, so again, this it's a small portion of the existing, it's existing developed, there's, you know, driveway and existing home and deck. So this, this area in yellow is the proposed erosion control. So that'll be maintained during construction. There's a designated materials and equipment storage area in, in the existing uh, driveway. And finally, this area here in purple is where we're going to be providing mitigation plantings. So that's the overview of the project and the resource areas. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Chris Crump, who is the architect. And I don't know if you wanted to share, Chris, or you want to just go through your permitting set. Well, Chris, your sound's off. Sorry. 
there you go. Sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so, uh, so yeah, this is this is just what we what we would call a permit set for a construction. Um, if we can go to the next slide, um, so this is our these are existing floor plans. Uh, currently, this is the first floor plan. This is the area that uh, of the existing area of a dining room and a mudroom area. As you walk in the front door, here's the deck right here. Uh, can you see my mouse? No. Okay. So you have um, the mudroom area, dining room area on the bottom on the on the top floor plan, but on the bottom part of the top floor. Thank you. Um, and this is where the expansion would come out. Um, it's roughly just about a five foot expansion and comes out right to the edge of the existing deck on the right hand side there. Um, so if you were to uh, at the front door, if you right in front of the front door, there's a deck there and the expansion would come out just even with that. Um, that is uh, so the, the, the tricky part about this is the existing floor uh, for that dining room and mud room and the kitchen area is in fact not above two feet above floodplain. It it is into the floodplain, the two feet above floodplain, by approximately four inches. So, uh, if you look in that floor plan, there's a living room area in the center of the floor plan, um, and as you drop straight down from there, there's a step down from that floor plan into the mud room and dining room and kitchen area that wraps around the whole house. Um, and so what we are looking to do uh, to be able to get this above the floodplain is we're going to continue the floor of the living room over the existing floor of the mudroom and dining room to get the new construction above two feet above the floodplain. Um, and that would that would raise the floor up in that area to make sure that the new construction is above the floodplain and um, meets all criteria uh, for that aspect of it. Um, and so on the second floor, uh, there's an existing bedroom up there with stairs up. Um, we are in the scope of the work, not to do with the uh, touching the ground at all, but then included in the scope of work is to um, reconfigure the stairs that go up there and putting a shed dormer um, on both sides of that existing bedroom to give more, not more living space, but more headroom uh, in that space. So if we can go to the next plan. These are existing floor plans. Obviously, this is the uh, the first one there at the top is the uh, elevation of the existing house facing the street. Um, the one on the uh, on the bottom is the one facing um, the river. And the next uh, slide, uh, and this is obviously the other two sides of the property. Um, there's a lot of jogs and roof lines and pitches and so forth, and then our attempt to Put the new addition on we're trying to make it a little bit more um less uh to not as many lines in the in the uh in the structure so uh, we can go to the next slide so as you can see here um the addition is in the bottom half of the floor plan there's a dashed line going across there from left to right that's showing the existing line of the building and then we're just simply extending that out another five feet uh, to give more room to the dining room and mudroom area. And um, again, keeping it at the same level as the, the living room. And then just above on the left-hand side of the dining room, it'll step back down to the existing floor of the kitchen. Um, uh, and the next slide. And on the second floor, uh, we're reconfiguring the stair that goes up to the second floor and um, if you can, can you zoom in on this a little bit? There we go, perfect. So you can see at the top of it, you can see where the proposed new, the new proposed shed dormer is and where the existing shed dormers are. There are existing shed dormers on both sides of the existing house. We're just extending the existing shed dormers all the way across uh, to provide more headroom upstairs because right now uh, the walls on the top and bottom of that floor plan are about two and a half to three feet high. So. Um, we're just trying to create more headroom. Uh, next slide. Um, there we go. So this is what we're doing uh, or we plan to do on the proposed addition. Uh, the new addition um, on the first floor, the joist would cantilever over the existing structure that's there now. And then we'd have pilings that go in on the um, on the outside corners of the addition to be able to give them the, uh, the necessary structural support. Um, 
and so everything would be open to below. There is an existing uh, foundation under the main rectangular box of the original house, uh, but there are no mechanicals in the basement anymore. Uh, they moved them all up above. Um, so there is just literally an open crawl space. that's probably about five or six, five and a half feet high. I think it is. Um, the owner said that she's five, six, I think five, four, and she can stand up in it, but that's about it. Um, she almost hits the ceiling there. So it's a very low crawl space underneath the existing, um, but the, the wrap around, um, lower level that you see on there existing is all on pilings already. Um, so. Uh, it's just the original center core that has a, a five foot crawl space underneath it. Um, so in this concept, we're not increasing the the, the existing uh, main ridge height. Um, and we are minimizing as much as possible the extension of the, uh, the proposed addition. We wanted to just square it up with the existing deck. We didn't want to push it out any further than that. Um, you know, trying to make sure that we don't take off, take any more land than we need to, uh, to expand this. Uh, again, uh, as Dan mentioned, it's about 116 square feet of additional first floor space. Um, the next slide. I think that's about it. The rest of them are just in, uh, oh, yep. Yeah. And there's the other sides, but, uh, that the only thing that's, uh, insignificant for this is, um, the backs, the other shed dormer on the back side of the house on the on the top floor. There, you can see the extension of that uh, existing shed dormer. Uh, but other than that, that's for the most part the scope of the project and the scope of the construction work that's being done on the property. Um, so, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, I just had one in that. If you could go back to what we were just looking at. Sure. Um. And the in the picture that was shown at the beginning, there was lattice work underneath here. It was uh oh. And, oh, and that one. okay, yep. And I the the plan that we were just looking at does not show lattice work. Yep. Um, so are you, are you re, uh, depending on when that was added? We yeah. don't allow lattice work. Understood, and that's why I didn't show anything on there because I know um, you know the lattice is not a, not something that's approved. Uh, to be put on the bottom of the uh, structure. So we're not, uh, I, I, you know, I have instructed my client that, you know, unless it's approved, uh, lattice work can't be proposed and put on, on the existing, on the new structure. Okay. But it will remain on the old structure. Yeah. It, it, you know, uh, that's what's there now. Um, you know, if it's deemed that it's, uh, it has to be taken off an existing structure, I don't know if that's um, something that has to be done, but well, I guess it would depend on when it was added. <laughs> yeah, I, I to be honest with you, I don't know. I have no idea when it was done. Um, I, I that would be a question for the owner. Unfortunately, she's um, away on vacation right now. Unfortunately, she was up. Uh, she was disappointed that uh, she was not able to make the meeting. Um, but uh, I can ask about that and find out what that what that situation is. Okay. Um, will the entire First floor now be two foot above the base flood elevation. Nope, the new construction will be two feet above the well. Uh, the new construction addition of the five feet going out. If we can go back to the floor plan, please. Okay, and just zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, so. Um, that whole entire dining room, mudroom area will be up above the floodplain, including uh, if you just scroll up a little bit. Um, the existing living room is also above the floodplain. Um, the existing structure, uh, you'll see on the left hand side, there's uh, the words one step down. That's the existing kitchen area. It, steps, it would step back down into the existing kitchen. No, that mud room portion that you're going to be uh, constructing above, are you going to leave the existing yes. flooring? Yes. Okay. But it would just, it, it will only be just, uh, um, you know, uh, the existing structure that's there. Uh, we're just building it. So all any new construction would be on top of uh, and above the flood, two feet above the floodplain, the bottom of the, mm -hmm. uh, the bottom of the new structure. Uh, putting in would be above floodplain, the two-foot floodplain elevation. 
Did you consider bringing the rest of the uh, first floor level without like not having this step, but putting everything above the floodplain? We did, but that's a full kitchen that was that is not extremely old. I don't know when it was done, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, it was done at some point. It's not extremely old, but uh, to be able to take that and raise it up would put us way over the construction costs of what we can we would be allotted to do on this project. And the head height on it as well, it would be. So the, the, the ceiling height that we're going to obtain by doing this addition is not going to be the same ceiling height that we have further down in the kitchen. Um, so if we were to raise that floor up, there would not be enough ceiling height um, without taking off the roof on that side as well and raising that. Julie, is that how we usually handle uh, situations with existing that doesn't uh, meet it? when they're doing new work? Yeah, as long as the new addition is elevated to what we need it to be two feet above base flood elevation, then, um, and if a structural engineer, you know, is okay with the existing foundation remaining as is, um, again, if it's not a substantial improvement be pushing it over the 50% rule, then that existing foundation can remain. If they were to be doing renovation work um, and structural renovation work on the existing foundation, it would have to be elevated, but leaving it as is. Um, was uh, the letter from the structural engineer eventually added to this filing? That I mean, was, it wasn't there this afternoon. But. No, and, and and we didn't request that. that we, we did that on 5 um, Harbor Street, and they did get that to us um, today. But on this one, um, no, there's not a letter from the structural engineer. Essentially, because the addition is elevated two feet, um, and there, if it doesn't trigger a substantial improvement, then we don't, we don't need the letter from the structural engineer. The letter from the structural engineer is required if it was a substantial improvement in the AE zone and not in the V or AO zone. In this case, it is the AO zone. So, um, but in the AE zone, if it was a substantial improvement and they wanted to try to get out of lifting the building up on pilings, then we would need a letter from a structural engineer. In this case, that doesn't apply. So we just need the um, appraisals and we would go by whether or not they say it's a substantial improvement. If it is, it's elevated, if not, Well, whether whether there's a letter required or not, I mean they they are changing the foundation by the cantilever and so forth. Uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. You're you're right. It probably would be smart for them to be consulting a structural engineer on that on that issue. It's just not required under our regs in terms of the substantial improvement in this case. We will need a, uh, obviously, we will need a structural engineer to do the framing and pilings on this uh, prior to getting a building permit anyhow. So um, it's just at a stage right now where it hasn't been engaged yet, but uh, we will, it'll be uh, needed, a mandatory for us to get a structural and piling plan uh, to be able to support this in order to get a, obtain a building permit if we get this through, pass through. Okay. And then in that case, you know, if, if for some reason your structural engineer indicates that the existing foundation does need modification uh -huh. then that needs to come back to us. Understood. Um, okay. Also, just, uh, for an FYI, we're, we're, we're not going to vote on this tonight just because the last information we got came in at, at four o'clock and we need at least a, was a, a week or two weeks ahead. I can't remember, but um, anyways, so. Understood. I, I, I totally understand that. And, and the, because we haven't seen that documentation. I, I don't think it was ever on the website uh, for us to look at it. Which but was? The, this is what would have been uploaded today, this form. 
So that form is, is good, but that doesn't really mean anything to us unless we have the um, post-construction appraisal. So you only gave us the, the existing conditions appraisal, appraisal mm -hmm. and what we're looking for is a comparison between existing and proposed. Um, and so that form doesn't tell us that either. Okay. This, this was the appraisal report. So I guess there was, um, wasn't clear to me. So they reported the property value is 1.2 million and then the improvement value is 408,000. So yeah. that doesn't represent the proposed conditions. That's just, it, well, you don't just add that to the-, the what, When I looked through, when I looked through this appraisal report, it's the couple things became clear. There's one appraisal. It's a, it, the appraisal that we were received is the appraisal of the existing conditions. And in the re appraisal of the existing conditions, it shows that the property value, the entire property, meaning the land and all the structures on the land are 1.2 million. And the improvement value, which when you look up what improvement value means in appraiser language, it means the value of the improvements on the property, the improvements on the property or the structures and anything else on the property. So the improvement value on the existing property is the, the value of the structures on the existing property, which is 408. So we're still just looking at existing structure versus existing property, which is an interesting number to know, but it doesn't give us any indication whatsoever of what the proposed project would yield in terms of value. We don't have a proposed appraisal. We don't have a appraisal of the post-construction condition. Does that make sense? Okay, and just to clarify, if that number is 49% or less of this number, no. Then the one the one point two million number is actually irrelevant. The only number the commission cares about is the value of the structure only. So when we get the appraisals, you they do an appraisal of the whole property and then they pull out a value for the structure only, which is what they call the improvement value because it's the improvement on the property. The improvement is a structure. We get a value for that. That in this case is four hundred and eight thousand. Now we need the appraiser to look at the proposed project and what kind of improvements to the structure are being made and then what the after construction value of the structure would be and that's probably more than 408,000 but whatever that number is with this addition added and the, all of the improvements upstairs and downstairs then we look to see whether that number is more than 50 percent of 408,000. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, all right. So it's it, so just to be clear, it's not that if you have a four hundred eight thousand dollar assessed value of the existing structure, you have two hundred thousand of construction work to be done. It's the assessed value of the of the project afterwards. Um, you know, and it's not the assessed value, right? We're not, when we're talking about the assessed value, that's today's assessed value, mm -hmm. and you can compare that to construction estimated construction costs. Or you can do an appraise a market value appraisal of the structure mm -hmm. versus a market value appraisal of the structure with the proposed project added onto it. Um, and that can't be more than a 50% increase in value over the existing structure. And so what, what you guys started question. out doing is this appraisal, you know. I guess my question would be, let's say, uh, Hypothetically, I, please don't take it to uh, verbatim, but uh, let's say the construction costs were 300,000, but it only increased the, the assessed value of the project uh, of the property by another 150,000, hypothetically. Yep. That's totally be... fine. And okay. that can happen. And that's, and that happens. And that's yeah. why you choose one um, method or another. So if, if, if the construction costs are 600,000, but yep. it only raises the value of the structure by 100,000, Yep. We don't care what those construction costs are. Got it. If you're going with this method of the looking at appraised values, uh -huh. then we're just going to look at that appraised value. We're not going to care what you've spent on construction. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate yep. the clarity. Yep. Although if I spent six hundred thousand, I would hope it would improve the value by more than hundred thousand. Right, but what, that, what but that goes think? to like sometimes sometimes people want 
like a really fancy materials that yes. they have shipped over from Europe for whatever personal reason. Yes. It might cost a lot, but don't necess that doesn't necessarily yield a value to someone else. Yeah, I've, I've seen that a lot too. So yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. So do we need a motion um, to continue? Uh, we will at uh, at a certain point. Okay. Um, are we all done with uh, questions at this point? I think so. I am. If, I, am if, if I, might, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but if I may ask the board if we can definitely get as much uh, con, uh, constructive criticism or comments on it so that we can adjust the plan. So next time, and hopefully we come back with all the required uh, appraisal uh, information on it, um, then hopefully we'll make it a little bit easier for you next time. We just want to make sure we don't have to bother you too many times uh, to get through this. If we yeah. hopefully we can get this passed, that's all. Okay. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing more plantings, but it's not required. So. Right. Yeah, there, there's, so all that, uh, Okay, so you took a picture. The picture that I saw earlier, um, yeah, I can see the. Is there anything further out, or? Uh, I don't know if you have any other pictures, Dan. We oh, have you had another one with a red circle around it. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So all this other area is going to stay sand. Yes. Yes, it's currently sand. It will remain sand. We we don't have any intention unless we put. Um, she also mentioned there might she might be uh happy to put some um I, I don't know what's on the approved list of plantings but along the fence line maybe she'll put some shrubbery of some kind um that fits with it with the desired plantings on your list um you know she did ha hope to be able to put something along there not only for environmental reasons but also for screening with the neighbors um so yeah. I, I think she'd be open to that. So we, we can definitely suggest maybe uh, some more plantings along there if, it, if that would make the board happier. Oh yeah, no, that would, that would be great. And it'd be um, yeah. great to Na have native, it. Native and, yeah. and sand dune yep. um, friendly. All right, yes. yeah. And uh, you know, if you can if you can show those areas, you know, if, if you're gonna plant a few shrubs along the fence, if you can show that in this, this plan here, that would be yep. fantastic. Sure. Okay. Believe yeah, she can. That, um, Plum Island planting list of native plants on on our website, Chris, and yep. it covers trees, shrubs, grasses, like all, the whole thing. So yeah, she is the the the, the homeowner is um uh I don't know the terminology for it, but she owns a plant company, uh commercial plant company. So she's very well adversed in plants, um and planting. So. I'm sure she'll like when when we gave her the list, she went down. Yep, I want that one, that one, and that one. In regards to options that she could provide, uh, she knew exactly what they are and everything. So I'm sure she'll definitely know exactly what plants and the technical names for them uh, when the time comes. Yeah, well, she she's welcome to put as many uh, plants as she wants there from okay. that list. So. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else. Anybody else in the commission have a question? For now, at anything in the future, we'll we'll send to Julie and she'll uh, share with you guys. Okay. Um, my next question. Uh, well, also, uh, does anybody from the public have any questions? I see someone named Jillian. If if you want to say something, Jillian, raise your hand. If not, that is fine. And it look, uh, Jillian wants to say something. Julie, can you? Uh... No. No, I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. I miss. I just thought you wanted to say like hi, welcome to the group or something. This is my first oh, meeting. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Julie. No, if you have any questions on the uh, on the project, no, that's uh, it's up to you. If not, you're all set. All right. Very good. Okay. Um. So. Uh, Get a motion to continue this to the May 7th meeting. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you in May.
Thank you very everyone. I appreciate your time. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Can I get a motion to close the public hearings? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Call Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I vote yes. And Barb, you'll you'll be included in this next time. Um. Let's yeah, see. I I did want to let you know that um I had planned a trip to the Azores uh May fourth through the eleventh, so it just happens to uh, occur on okay. the first day. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, quite all right. You can always, you know, they have, I know they have internet in the Azores too. So, <laughs> Steve did, uh, Steve might just have to delay it a week on. or two weeks. We'll send you but some the, homework to do before, yeah, the, before the second. Okay, week. perfect. It, it, it won't get you the, uh, the record which, uh, Steve called in from New Zealand one time. So, but, uh, <laughs> well, that is, that is a true commitment. <laughs> You you have fun in the Azores. Thank you. Is it a group trip, or you're going by yourself, or just doing it yourself? No, just two of us. Yeah. Just two. Okay. Very good. Um, all right. Do we have anything else? Anybody? I don't know. Truly, you have you made any progress with that violation? Wish I could give you a better update than I have, Steve. I don't have an update on that. Um, and I, I just got back from California, so that's part of why I didn't make a lot of progress last week. But um, it's, not okay. off my, it's not off my agenda. Well, eventually yeah. they, might, they might show up there. Yeah, they might. Yeah. Could, uh, sure could they someone remind me um, what the status is with National Grid. I, I I know they came to us with a plan, but were they going to prepare something and come to the board with yeah. what they're um, doing? Yeah, remember, I, I CC'd you. I got in touch with them after our last meeting, and um, I think I CC'd you, David. Now I can't remember either um, what their response was. Essentially, I asked them to come to the next meeting um, and present their revised plans to us. Um, they indicated that they weren't. They didn't indicate that they were looking forward to doing that in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> um, but I can't re vividly remember what the email from them actually said. I'll go back and, and look for it tomorrow, and I'll send it to you guys, and you can let me know what you'd like from them. Um, well, I, I think I had, they had said something. They were going to put a, a seed mix in there. And right. I and I asked them, you know, okay, what's in that seed mix? Because if, yep. if they're still going to put freshwater stuff in there and it's still going to get flooded with salt water, it's not going to work. Right. Great. That You're refreshing my memory, Steve. That's exactly what happened. They said, no worries. We're addressing this and we're going to, um, and we're going to fill it in and put the flat valve on and and re and revegetate. And I said, well, the whole point, or they said, we're going to throw a seed mix down. And I said, well, you know, the whole point of this was that the, the problem was that it wasn't growing anything there, that it was not, it was supposed to be vegetated and it wasn't, it hasn't been vegetated for all this time. So right now, throw, telling us that you're going to put a seed mix down isn't necessarily making us feel better about this. Um, we still don't know what that seed mix involves, whether or not it's salt tolerant, whether or not it's going to grow. Um, etc. So we do need more information. And I believe that that was the last communication that we heard. Well, they had all, also mentioned that they were going to cut down that, they might cut yes. down that cedar tree, which is the only large piece of vegetation out there. So that's no, the they're not cutting that down. that's actually living. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for reminding me of all that. I will get back with them um, tomorrow and just let them know that not quite what we wanted to hear. And, and I don't recall them having plans. I, I remember a narrative or a letter they had, but I, I don't remember actual plans. Yep, we didn't get plans. I think they gave a spec on the, 
duck valve or something, but uh, that yeah, was they've about been it. pretty cagey about it. We asked them for plans. They said, well, can we just do this during the certificate of compliance process? And I said, no, we want to see some plans. Um, we don't, might not necessarily want it to be a formal amendment or modification, but you need to show us the plans. Didn't We never got the plans, asked them to come into a meeting. They said, we're taking care of it. We're going to throw some seedlings down. So, yeah, that's where that's where things stand. It's not a good, we haven't had good responses. So um, I You would will, think that they weren't even aware that there's been so much flooding or do they just not care? It's weird to me. Well, they're very aware of the flooding because they had to put sandbags around some of their buildings. So yeah. maybe that's think, a different group of people. But I think what it is is they do not care about this little triangle of land. They don't care. That <laughs> it's would... not jeopardizing their substation. It's not. They don't care about the rail trail. They don't. It, it, they don't care. So, um, and that's my. That's again. You know, they may. I could be wrong about that. They might care very much, but. Um, Let's just make, let's invite them to a meeting. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? No. Hearing nothing. Have you I'll seen make the a motion to adjourn? Oh, wait, hang thing. on, Bill. Oh. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bill. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the, the little river trails, have you been over there at all, Joe? Uh, I have not recently, no. There is a tree that is uh, before the very first intersection off of uh, Hale Street, okay. um, not not the entrance up by I ninety five and the the one uh, further down collapsed culvert. But yeah, there's there's a tree. You got to step right through it right now um, before the first junction, which is like two tenths of a mile off off of the road. So uh, I, there's a couple places I know with big trees down in there right now. So, oh, there's a big tree that is down across it? Yes, there is. Yes. Okay. And there's, there's another place also up in the uh, the meadow, the open meadow area. Mm -hmm. And there's a big tree down. And so the, the trail is getting wide because people are having to bypass these these down trees. Okay. Those are two big trees. Anyway, Joe, down. should we maybe Joe and Steve should we maybe see if Matt can get on this? Yes. We need <clears throat> we need to have another meeting with them anyway. We we do. So that's a good good point. And Bill, if if you could like, um, send me an email with a way to like identify okay. identifying I will. locations. Yep. Then we have someone who can get out there and clear it. Sure. Sure. That'd be great. Thank you. Although, if you have a chainsaw, feel free. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Steve, there is a motion on the floor. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Ready then. Roll call vote. Uh, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Phil Mullen? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, all right, Barb, we'll uh, we'll see you next meeting. If uh, you got any no, questions, we'll do not... Uh... She'll be in the Azores next meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like I wasn't even listening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, if you have any questions, Barb, feel free to contact me or or Julie, and uh, we'll uh, go from there. Okay, and sounds great. Have and fun. Julie, in the I, will, I will. I won't be at the next meeting. I have a program that night. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Very good. All right. All right, folks. Have goodbye. a good evening. Bye bye. Thank you. You too. Bye bye.